Hey guys, it's Dave. I would like to discuss some Pikmin theories with you. I will be using visual aids, words, music, and other things in these videos, so be ready, have your speakers on, and be paying close attention. Okay, here goes nothing. I believe that the onion in Pikmin 3 is an evolutionary stage that follows after the candy pop bud. My reason lies in the fact that in nature, flowers on both plants and bushes often become fruits or bulbs after reaching the mature stage. Considering the theme of Pikmin 3 is fruit, this does not seem to be too far off. Also, in Pikmin 1, Olimar's notes in the anime wheel clearly support the idea that Pikmin and their species are constantly changing, and I think this includes their relatives, the onion and the candy pop bud. Quote, Could this be the next stage in Pikmin evolution? Like the Pikmin themselves, it has many mysteries. Olimar on candy pop buds in Pikmin 1. This specimen constantly changes colors. When Pikmin are thrown into it, it shoots out seeds that match the flower's coloration the moment the Pikmin landed inside of it. The number of seeds shot out is always greater than the number of Pikmin thrown in. It can be said that this is a completely baffling plant and many mysteries remain over precisely what sort of relationship it has with the Pikmin. It would appear the Pikmin gain all of the benefit from the relationship. Perhaps it is simply a different variety of Pikmin to begin with. Olimar on Queen Candy Pop Buds in Pikmin 2. Unquote. Second, this new fruit-like onion is discovered on a vine as well as inside of a cave. Perhaps if onions or candy pop buds are left dormant, they will sprout up and become more advanced beings. Just like in real life, onions, when left in the ground, will sprout roots, and certain plants in life will sprout vines when buried for long periods of time, like watermelons. Also, our onion in Pikmin 3 fluctuates the colors in response to the Pikmin colors that are on the field, much how the Queen Candy Pop cycles through the primary Pikmin colors. Lastly, the onion has a bit of a mechanical appearance. We know that in the world of Pikmin, machines often combine with nature to form a new species, like the man at legs or the gatling groink. It's entirely possible that some sort of machine proposed a relationship to the Pikmin species. In this case, that creature being an onion or a candy pop bud, aiding the hosting Pikmin inside of it, giving the machine protection in return. But that's just a theory. Also, Copayans appear to have the same language as Olimar. Also, very similar features. However, most Copayans seem to have rounded ears, and the Hokutations, like Olimar, have pointed ears. Also, there are varying degrees of noses, such as Brittany having a pointy nose, and the President having a huge nose, but I'm sure it all depends on genetics, location, and gravitational pull. Originally, I thought Brittany must have been from Copai's moon, because of her smaller eyes and thinner nose, which would imply a lower sense of gravity on the moon. I don't know. I'd like it to be true, but it's just a guess. After all, we haven't seen many Copayan females to judge that one on. Also, I think Copayan technology might be the same stuff that Olimar and his crew recovered from PNF-404. My reason behind this is because Drake is very high-tech, and Olimar gathered a lot of technology from Earth, and since they're in near-planetary systems, I think some of the technology from Hokutate's recovery would have spread to Kopai. Also, Drake 
uses a Kronos reactor for the warp key drive that is highly advanced, unlike the ship which has two Kronos reactor pieces and the original Dolphin which has about ten. This leads me to believe that Drake is highly advanced and is in fact a product of Earth technology. But anyway, back to my first theory about Pikmin. As you can see by this chart I drew up, this is what I believe the evolution process of Pikmin works like. As you can see, the first stage on this chart is the seedling. Then the seedling matures into a Pikmin. I do not think seedlings that are placed in an onion safe zone can develop. However, if a Pikmin is placed into the ground by an enemy, creature, was eaten, or anything like that, I believe if given space from the onion or candy pop bud, it will become a flower Pikmin resting in the ground. Over time, it's possible that this flower will grow larger. Notice how the candy pop bud has five petals, much like the Pikmin and the onion. I think if the candy pop bud is left alone for a long time and not given any Pikmin, it will develop into a queen candy pop bud. Likewise, if time passes again, if a candy pop bud goes un disturbed. I think that it will take the elements around it and then become a bulb. This bulb eventually sprouting into an onion, and if this onion is awoken prematurely before it blossoms, it will become an onion that we see in Pikmin 1 and 2. However, if it is left in the ground, is it possible that it will sprout a vine, and this vine will then sprout further and further to the point where it becomes a fruit and then that fruit becomes the superior onions we see in Pikmin 3. At the end of this, it leads all back to the very first stage, the seedling. The onion produces more Pikmin, and it's possible the Pikmin produce more onions. After all, in the ending cutscene of Pikmin 1, we saw many colors, some duplicates. I lead this to be a reason why this theory is supported. After all, we have only seen one or two red onions. Maybe there are more. Okay, the second of these theories is simple. In Japanese mythology, there is a creature. This creature is named the Umibozu. What this creature does is it disguises itself as a wave in the ocean, capsizes ships, kills their captains, takes the treasure, but, if the captain were to survive, the creature, the Umibozu, would hunt down the captain and make sure he is killed. Sound familiar? In Pikmin 1, the guard satellite did not notice the meteor. In Pikmin 2, the ship, on its way back to Earth, does not notice the meteor. Olimar has to steer around it. In the submerged castle, there's a creature that the ship cannot see. It is anchored in another dimension. In two-player battle mode, this water wraith only seems to pursue Olimar and is not afraid of Louis at all. In Pikmin 1, the Gulix is found at the landing site. In Pikmin 1, the meteor has small chunks fly off of it when Olimar is hit. In Pikmin 1, the only weakness of the Gulix is blue Pikmin. In Pikmin 2, the Water Wraith has become invulnerable, all except for one weakness, purple Pikmin. Do you see what I'm hinting at? Okay. Pikmin 3 actually connects this theory further, but I don't want to talk about that right now. However, I will go into a bit more detail. The Umibozu is able to shapeshift in Japanese mythology. It often has the form of a balding monk, a humanoid figure with serpentine limbs and no hair, no eyes. The Gulix resembles a blob, but that does not rule it out of the question. My reason for saying this is because what if the Gulix is a juvenile form of the Umibozu creature, in this case the Water Wraith? What if, after being struck down by Olimar many times, 
it developed a sense of anger and hatred toward him. In Pikmin 2, it's stronger. But notice, the only weakness it has is the fact that Pikmin, purple Pikmin, have hair. Much like the legend states that it's balding monk. Purple Pikmin have hair, balding monk. Makes sense. Also, when the water wraith is hit by a purple Pikmin, it bends down into a praying pose, much like a monk in the legend would. They are often seen praying. Even crazier is the idea that maybe, just maybe the meteor is the reason why creatures crash on this planet. Maybe the meteor is truly the true villain of Pikmin. After all, Pokemon did something very similar. The creature Deoxys was housed inside a meteorite. It also looks very similar to the Water Wraith, in the idea that its body is very alien-like and moves about. Also, Nintendo has a good habit of making Japanese mythology very prevalent in their games. Another theory about this mythology piece is very simple, and it involves the Pikmin themselves. You see, in Pikmin 1, Olimar talks about the three colors of carrots that were in his favorite soup. These colors being blue, red, and yellow. Also, Olimar appears to have some disdain for his boss. This is clear in Pikmin 2 entries, but also in some th so form in Pikmin 1 he talks about the analog computer, or certain chip parts having an attitude like his boss. The reason I bring this up Anyone here play Legend of Zelda? Ocarina of Time has the Kukiri in it, and those creatures are forest sprites. However, since they were discovered by Hylians, the natural people of the time, they resemble humans. However, in Legend of Zelda The Wind Waker, they appear to be very different because they have lost human contact. These forest sprites in Japanese media simply take the appearance of whoever finds them. Maybe Nintendo's trying to do that with the Pikmin. After all, the Emperor Bulblax has the same eyes as the President, and has a similar face. Also, it eats Olimar's secret safe. It eats his money. That's what work does. Makes sense. Ironically, in Pikmin 2, the ship is sold for money by the President. Yeah. Also, the Pikmin represent the colors of the soup, which implies maybe the Pikmin are simply appearing that way because they helped Olimar, not just anybody. Maybe they look different to somebody else. Maybe Louis sees them as bugs. Maybe that is why he's afraid when he first meets one. But that's just a theory. Okay, back to the Umibozu thing. I noticed that Pikmin 1's boss, the Emperor Bulblax, is a lot larger than the normal average Bulblax. Also, its eye stalks are not coming out of the ground. How did it see Olimar? Hmm. Even stranger, it leaves no soul, no carcass, anything when it dies. It just drools, boils down into a smaller shape, and digs into the sand. Weird, the Gulix doesn't die either. Also, that weird blue goo happens again. Even stranger, Pikmin 2. The Water Wraith doesn't die. No soul, no corpse, just vanishes. Even weirder. In Pikmin 2, Louie and the Titan's Weevil. The Titan's Weevil doesn't leave a soul, no carcass, and once again evaporates into this weird blue-like substance. What if the Umibozu creature, the Water Wraith, the Gulix are all the same thing? Every single final boss we've ever faced is the same creature, just taking different forms, stealing what's most important to Olimar, his treasure, from his ship. After all, in Pikmin 2, what does the ship almost do when it lands? It averts a crash landing! A crash landing and crash! What if the treasure was Louis? Maybe he has a vast knowledge of something, very vital to Omar's survival. That's why the ship took him. And maybe that is why the Umibozu wants him in the form of the Titan's Weevil. I won't add any more spoilers, but I will say this now. For anybody who's curious, this theory is cemented together in Pikmin 3 by a very interesting occurrence. I'm not going to spoil anything, I'm just letting you know. This theory will make sense. The Umibozu is 
in fact, in some form, present in Pikmin 3. But that's enough for now. I'm Dave. Thank you for watching. It's been amazing. Thank you for listening. Um, if you guys like these theories, wonderful. If you don't, I'm sorry. Suggest one. I might think of it. We'll use some science to explain it. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see your, your comments about this later. And, to quote a friend, at the very last moment of every video, I'll see you in a bit. Okay, I'm just joking. I'll probably end off with something like, okay, thank you for watching, I will see you all soon, or keep on doing the Pikmin things, yeah. Or perhaps give me the Pikmin, I'm not sure. Since Europe has the release date soon, Japan already has it, North America has a while, everybody else has quite a while, I guess I'll end with, remember, Pikmin for the pick win. Anyway, it's been nice, thank you for watching. See you later, and take care.